Hi, I'm Chris Rycroft, and welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In the next few videos in this series, we're going to introduce numerical schemes for solving partial differential equations, which are differential equations involving functions of more than one variable. Here, we're going to look broadly at the types of partial differential equations that we'll encounter, and we'll introduce a useful classification scheme that will help us determine which numerical approaches to apply. In the next few videos in this series, we're going to introduce numerical methods for solving partial differential equations, or PDEs. However, we'll find that the numerical methods that we need to use depend greatly on the type of PDE that we are solving. And in this video, we're going to introduce three broad classes of PDEs that we're going to encounter, and we'll look at these in turn. The first class are hyperbolic PDEs, and here a prototypical example would be the wave equation, where we're solving for a solution u that's a function of time t and space x, and it will satisfy the equation utt minus uxx is equal to zero, where the subscripts refer to partial derivatives. The second class are parabolic PDEs, and here a prototypical example is the heat equation, and again, we would solve for a solution u of t and x, and it would satisfy ut minus uxx is equal to f, where f is now a source term. The third class are elliptic PDEs, and here a prototypical example is the Poisson equation, and now we would solve for a solution u as a function of two spatial variables, x and y, and it would satisfy the equation uxx plus uyy is equal to a source term f. And so we could ask ourselves, where do these names hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic come from? These names are related to conic sections, and to illustrate this, let's look at a general second-order PDE that's a function of two variables, x and y. So we could write this as a uxx plus b uxy plus c uyy, plus d ux, plus e uy, plus f times u, plus g is equal to zero. And we could map this onto a corresponding quadratic function, q of x and y, which is equal to a x squared, plus b x y, plus c y squared, plus d x, plus e y. And now, let's look at performing this mapping for the three prototypical examples that we introduced. So let's begin by looking at our prototypical hyperbolic PDE, the wave equation. So we have utt minus uxx equals zero, and we can map that onto the quadratic function q of x and t is equal to t squared minus x squared. And if we now look at the curves q of x and t is equal to a constant c, then we see that we end up with hyperbole. Now let's look at our prototypical parabolic PDE, the heat equation, that we have is ut minus uxx is equal to f. And our corresponding quadratic function is therefore t minus x squared. And if we now look at lines of constant t minus x squared, then that will give us parabole. Finally, let's look at our prototypical elliptic PDE, the Poisson equation and we have uxx plus uiy is equal to f, and so our corresponding quadratic function will be q of x and y is equal to x squared plus y squared, and in this case, if we look at constant q of x and y, then we'll have ellipses. Now, it's worth noting that if we performed a change of variable in any of our PDEs. For example, we apply a affine transformation to our variables, then the corresponding quadratic would not change in character. If we start with ellipses, we will end with ellipses. If we start with hyperbole, we'll end with hyperbole. And therefore, these labels that we can associate to these PDEs will remain invariant even under a change of variable like this. More generally though, it can be difficult to classify all PDEs using conic section naming, 
and many problems don't strictly fit into this classification scheme. For example, we can have nonlinear PDEs, or higher order derivatives, or variable coefficient equations. Nevertheless, the names hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic are standard ways to describe PDEs, and we also find that these three classes of problems are often associated with specific features of the phenomena that we're trying to model. For example, we find that hyperbolic PDEs often represent time-dependent, conservative physical processes that don't have any dissipation. Parabolic PDEs often represent time-dependent, dissipative physical processes that evolve toward a steady state. And elliptic PDEs represent systems that are at equilibrium or some steady state. And in the next few videos, we'll explore these three classes of PDEs from both mathematical and numerical standpoints.